Luke Martin was seven years old when he had his first seizure. After that, he was constantly in and out of hospitals for tests and treatments. It sometimes felt like his whole life was spent sitting in a hospital waiting room. But despite all the tests, the doctors were completely baffled by his case. All the tests showed that his brain function was completely normal, yet he was still having seizures. I think we need to send your son to a special hospital for observation. We would recommend that he goes to the Linnell Children's Hospital, where the specialists in this field can do further investigation. Well, if you think it will help, then of course he must go. When Luke arrived at the hospital, the nurse gave him a friendly smile and held out her hand. Hello, Luke. I believe you're coming to stay with us for a little while. Luke nodded his head, a tear escaping from his eye. Now, now, Luke, don't get upset. This lovely nurse will take care of you. Luke gave his mother a weak smile and waved goodbye to her. As the nurse led him down the corridor to the ward he would be staying on, he looked at the other children laying in their beds. Some of them gave him a smile or waved to him, while others looked too frail to even open their eyes. You get yourself into bed and I will put your things away in your cupboard. He did as the nurse told him. Once he was settled in, the nurse leaned over and switched off his bedside lamp. Go straight to sleep now. The doctor will be around early in the morning to see you. Luke thought that he would never be able to get to sleep, but eventually exhaustion took over and he closed his eyes. It wasn't long before he was in a deep sleep. As he slept, he wasn't aware that all around him, black humanoid-like shapes began appearing out of the shadows. They began to surround all the children sleeping in their beds. Suddenly, Luke woke up and started screaming, ah, ah. The night nurse came running in from her station. What is it, Luke? I was having a weird dream. There were monsters all around me and they were trying to get to the other children too. Now, now, there are no monsters here. It was just a nightmare, that's all. Now, go back to sleep like a good boy. But Luke couldn't get back to sleep. He felt wide awake. As he lay there in the darkness, he felt alone and scared to death. Welcome back to SCP Exposed. Today, we bring you the Keter class subject, SCP-122. Before we continue, I wanna let you in on a secret. Yes, I love fishing. And yes, this video has a sponsor, Fishing Clash. Free to play on both iOS and Android. I've already caught loads of different fish, carps, catfishes, and an occasional shark. But there are hundreds of different fish species to discover in this game. You can also level up your fishing skills, collect gear, and upgrade your fishing rods, lures, and equipment to catch bigger fish. I like exploring the dozens of fisheries all around the world. My favorite fishing location is Cape Town, where I'm trying to catch the rare pajama shark. To put your skills to the test, you can join player versus player competitions through duels, challenges, tournaments, and championships. There are new events every week, coming up every single week. If you're a new player, use my gift code, I love fishing clash, and you'll get a special reward. 130 pearls, one gold pack of lures, the Pro Florida license, and an exclusive avatar. That's $15 of free gifts. To redeem your gift code, follow these three simple steps. My gift code will only be available until Saturday, August 7th. Download the game for free through the link in the description to support SCP Exposed. Thanks again to Fishing Clash. SCP-122 is to be stored in a standard containment chamber containing a single electrical outlet. No personnel dormitories are to be constructed within 500 meters of the containment area. At no time should the subject enter an unpowered state. Several redundant power systems are to be maintained and inspected regularly. In the event of SCP-122-1 manifestation, 35 members of site personnel assigned to enact containment are to be deployed outside the containment chamber. If it becomes hostile, Procedure 99 Renmar is to be enacted. Due to the potentially disastrous side effects in the event of cross-contamination, at no point are SCP-122 and instances of SCP-3060 small medical devices to be stored at the same facility. To enact Procedure 99 Renmar, all subjects are to assume specific positions in and around the containment chamber in order to prevent a containment breach. Two subjects are to man a portable generator with which the equipment used in Procedure 99 Renmar is powered. 
Three subjects are to be equipped with chemical irritants created as a byproduct of SCP-1837, which has been found to have an inhibitory effect on SCP-122-1 instances. After all instances of SCP-122-1 have been reduced to the point where entry is safe, five subjects are to enter the containment chamber and use an electrical extension cord from the generator to return SCP-122 to a powered state. These personnel are to be considered irrecoverable after entering the subject's containment chamber due to its effect. The remaining personnel are redundant. They will take the place of any incapacitated personnel. SCP-122 is a children's nightlight in the design of a stylized shooting star. When it is in a powered state, it lets off between 14 to 20 lux. No manufacturer's mark is present on or within its components. When in an unpowered state, SCP-122 will affect all subjects within a 500 meter radius of its location. When the subjects enter REM sleep, they will move into a comatose state in which they will remain until SCP-122 is resupplied with power. While comatose, humanoid figures appearing to be composed of a black, slightly translucent mass will appear from any shadows around the subject. These figures are hereafter known as instances of SCP-122-1. These instances exhibit signs of sapience and sentience, with physical abilities roughly equivalent to the affected subjects. They will attempt to locate as many human subjects as possible and expose them to SCP-122's effect. As more subjects are affected by 122, its radius of effect will expand, with the maximum range seen in testing being over 2.7 kilometers. The instances will attempt to gather all sleep aids within the area of effect and apply them to the subjects. These objects have included insomnia medication, traditional medicines known to be used as treatment with insomniacs, pillows, blankets, mattresses, bed frames, and media such as lullabies. When in a powered state, SCP-122 will affect the sleep patterns of all subjects within its radius. If a subject awakens from a state of REM sleep while within the subject's radius, they will display signs of insomnia and will complain of unusual dreams. These dreams have been found to cause minor psychological disturbances, and all personnel should be given weekly psychological evaluations, such as in Incident 122-1, where 11 instances breached containment, causing the death of over several members of site personnel and a number of casualties. Following recontainment operations, SCP-122's containment procedures were put under review. During this review, security footage of several maintenance personnel tampering with the subject's chamber lock was discovered. When questioned, the subjects claimed that they had done so under duress, saying that a canary was not allowing them to sleep unless they released SCP-122. Affected subjects were given Class A amnestics and containment procedures were revised. Upgrade to Keter was requested at that time. The subject was subsequently regraded to Keter class and moved to Arm Reliquary Containment Area 02. SCP-122 was discovered within the Linnell Children's Hospital after several reports of SCP-122-1 manifestations reached locally embedded agents. When the area was investigated, it was found that everyone within the building had been affected by the subject. Recovered documents indicate that a patient brought SCP-122 when being admitted. However, no record of the patient's identity has been found. Agents secured the subject with a portable power source and it was transported to Site-19. Foundation personnel have requested permission to determine the effects of SCP-2840's effects on the dreams. SCP-2840 is an incorporeal psychic entity that exists within the minds of humans experiencing REM sleep. It resides within one human subject at a time and appears dormant when the subject is conscious. It is capable of transferring itself between hosts that enter REM sleep within 100 meters from one another. It gravitates towards individuals that have a history of chronic nightmares and night terrors. Subjects suffering from recurring nightmares will find themselves unable to experience the recurring dream again after occupation by SCP-2840. It will manifest mid-scenario, violently interrupting the dream and changing it to a different scenario. For example, a subject dreaming of being chased found that the pursuer was attacked and consumed by a featureless figure, and then found themselves trapped within a dark forest with the figure pursuing at a relaxed pace. While still asleep, hosts realize and understand that they are dreaming, but they also have an understanding that they are entirely safe. 
Upon waking, hosts recognize that SCP-2840, in whatever form it took during the dream, was aware of their existence and that it removed the perceived threat from their nightmare. The request is currently pending approval by a senior foundation director. What do you think of that SCP case? Please leave your comments below. Thanks again to Fishing Clash for sponsoring this video. Download Fishing Clash through my link in the description and use my code until the 7th of August to get your special reward.